In an introductory physics course, we talk a lot about the conservation of mechanical energy, the sum of all the potential and kinetic energies of the system. And mechanical energy is conserved if there is no net work done by non-conservative forces. It turns out that energy is always conserved. It's just that that fact isn't always useful in solving problems. That energy still exists somewhere. Network by non-conservative forces can add or subtract from a system, but that just means the energy is subtracted or added from the environment around the system. For example, take something sliding under friction. So the friction is a non-conservative force which is removing energy from the system, removing the kinetic energy. But that energy is going into the thermal energy of the ground. The ground is heating up due to that friction. In the end, the object is at rest, it has lost all of its kinetic energy, but that energy is now contained into the thermal motion of the particles of the environment. So let's talk about the work done by non-conservative forces, because if you can calculate what that is, then conservation of energy is still useful to solve problems. So I've labeled work done by non-conservative forces as this W with a subscript NC. First of all, remember that if it's removing energy from the system, then the work done by those non-conservative forces is less than zero. If it's adding energy to the system, then it's positive. So the question is how to account for that when we apply conservation of energy. Previously, I said, look at two points in time, and you add all of your initial energies and all of your final energies, and they should be equal. And when we had conservation of mechanical energy, those energies were our initial potential and kinetic energies, and then our final potential and kinetic energies. So where to include this work done by non-conservative forces? This energy isn't really initial or final. It's during the work being done by non-conservative forces occurs between the initial and final time. And so you can include it, in fact, either place. For example, you could just list it with your initial energies. This is the initial energy that you start with. And if it's less than zero, then it would subtract from that initial energy, and the result would be equal to your final energy. If it's greater than zero, then it would add to your initial energy, and again be equal to your final energy. You don't have to include it there, though. You could include it with your final energies as long as you change the sign. It's just bringing it to the other side of the equation. Why would you do that? Well, if you think about dissipation, which is probably the most common effect of non-conservative forces, then this work is less than zero, which means this term is a positive number. And so then you can sort of think about it as in this friction example where you started with this amount of energy and then you ended with this amount of potential and kinetic and then this amount of energy dissipated in the system. So either way is okay. It's important that you not just memorize an equation but understand the physical origin of these terms and what they mean and represent.